Two years ago, on April 4th, 2018, longtime peace activists and dear friends of mine entered the Kings Bay Naval Base in St. Mary's, Georgia, on the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Like other activists before them, they followed Isaiah's command to beat swords into plowshares and also the call of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which said to confront the giant evils of militarism, extreme materialism, and racism. The Kings Bay Plowshare 7 took action to symbolically disarm Trident nuclear submarines. These weapons threaten all life on Earth. I learned about this action on April 5th, 2018, and I started writing to the activists during their time in the county jail. I loved getting their postcards and I became friends with them. And when the time came for their hearings and trial, I traveled to Georgia three times. I feel extremely lucky to have witnessed their bravery and their strong stand for peace. And they are some of my greatest teachers. Coming up to the second anniversary of their action, I asked my friend Claire Grady, one of the seven, if I could interview her. So let's go talk to Claire. Okay, so Claire, it is so wonderful to talk to you. Um, how are you doing? Thank you with for all... talking with me. Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. I'm glad Good. to be talking with you, Rosie. And, uh, the thoughtfulness of your your inquiries are okay. um, very compelling for me. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> so I really wanted to ask when I was looking at the interview and the questions, I wanted to ask, how did you get involved in peace work and who inspired you? Um, so that one is not very hard to answer because I'm one of five kids that was born into a family. Uh, my mother, Teresa, and my father, John, were both very much inspired by their, their faith, the Catholic faith, and the church teachings that were um, sort of become more and more uh, coming to the surface in in their generation uh with the help of people like dorothy day and thomas merton and uh dan and phil berrigan and the papal encyclical uh pop Potamenteris, many things that were sort of coming together rising um giving them really a passion to raise their five kids with love in action, if you will, um, like that, that justice is what love looks like in public kind of thing. And yes. so we were always made to, um, or invited to, well, they were an example themselves. They were always about the work of um, ending war and racial justice and mm -hmm. union justice and work, worker justice and just questions but also being of service, but also knowing that our own humanity depends on how um, we are in relationship to all those things in our midst. Yeah. So yeah, I, our parents were an inspiration and, and their friends and, um, and then each other, our siblings. Um, yeah, each of, yeah. Our, each of us siblings has inspired other, the others and um, it's kind of a rolling thing. But our parents our siblings our friends and keep going like that yes and the justice is what love looks like in public i've always thought you just always practice that so well and the king's bay action of course i learned about it pretty soon after it happened on april 5th i learned about it and i was wondering what was your process of praying and discerning about this action so um I received a letter inviting me to the process after my mother, Teresa, died four years ago today. And um, I have always resonated with the sacramental prophetic act of plowshares disarmament, symbolic, nonviolent symbolic disarmament. Uh, since I was younger, um, when I first learned of them and when my brother and sister took part and when I took part in them in the 80s. And so I... Um, embracing that symbol again but i was um challenged to integrate it to have integrity with all the other work that i had been doing um and was doing more recently in my life um in my community and so i um 
Yeah, your question was about the process that mm -hmm. led to the action. And so the friends that I was uh, in, the, in the process with and took the action with, um, most of them are very old friends. And yeah. we've been in these communities of faith and Catholic worker circles for many years. And uh, Liz and I were co-defendants in the Griffiths Bashers in the 80s. And um, yeah, so it was not a big leap. Uh, it was a bit hard uh, in the, the days that we started meeting nuclear weapons were just not on anybody's uh, radar mm -hmm. and um and when trump got elected we were still planning and that looked like a uh, really pretty scary uh prospect of yeah. doing an act in in a climate of such repression um yeah. but i'm grateful for friends who remain faithful and you know we get to talk about our fears and Fears are really, really important. Yes. They they inform us of a lot of things. Uh, and I'm glad that we're not just trying to be macho and, you know, <laughs> heroic in that, but kind of faithful with with uh, your, your fears sort of in the side seat and not in the front seat, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about the process. And I can say that of have a sense of the landscape or the, the journey and some of the markers and um, I was really glad to go into these kind of faith-based symbolic actions that really required a bit of risk and understand that the cross that we were invited to carry for ourselves always has an element of risk and so as I grew I would enter the the weeks and the month before Easter, uh, before Holy Week, and walk the community and have been, um, have journeyed my growing life through this faith and resistance community that has <gasps> understood the importance of putting faith into action and that the cross that we are asked to carry, our, our own cross, always involves an aspect of risk. And in my understanding, also always into that journey of the cross that Jesus and each of his disciples um, took always entailed had an element of relationship with the powers right mm -hmm. and so I got to walk through that more than once many times um, as a white person of privilege in this society I suppose I could have spared myself that that uh, risk and danger and hardship but it helped me to see the gospels and especially the passion and everything leading up to the passion which could be so subtle um and see that this journey well one that they all took it but it's um it wasn't an easy thing you know they mm -hmm. they as soon as they refused to be quiet or go away the the, pl the plans were plot made to to kill Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And so he he goes underground and just what is it like to live on the down low like that and to yeah. be hunted and searched and know that your days are numbered and still be willing to go to Jerusalem um, mm -hmm. where he most certainly knew that um, crucifixion, how gruesome that was. Um, he didn't uh, want to experience that. Uh, would like to see that cup pass him by, but was willing to the will of his father, uh, God, uh, to that point of saying yes to that journey. Um, so what I'm describing here, Rosie, in my faith journey is that, uh, well, I'm grateful for my elders and, and youngers who have accompanied me through that walk that helps me see with fuller sight that those scriptures without trivializing them it it brings them to life for me <clears throat> that is so beautiful claire um thank you for sharing about your journey to this action and so i was thinking about i was at the trial along with a lot of other amazing supporters and right after i was outside the courtroom and when everyone exited the courtroom there was so much singing and dancing and so much hope 
that was felt. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that. Rosie, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. So uh, we were all there, you and I and everyone, and we, we heard the jurors say uh, guilty on all counts with each charge and each person. And we witnessed the trial where the judge kept a very tight rein with threats yeah. of uh, bringing each of us into the back uh, back. Uh, bar chambers um, if we were to utter any words about the the illegality of the weapons and the nature of those weapons and the um, yeah the, the 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 fundamental material that needed to be shared was kept out so we weren't <laughs> surprised but it was kind of a heavy moment and yeah. the the re Joyce that came out of us was started by my sister Ellen, and she has been part of these plowshares since she was 19, yeah. uh, when she and my brother John took their first plowshares, and she was very much present um, for the first plowshares trial, and then we were present for our own father's trial in the 70s, and understood at a deep, deep level that this is a, p picking up your cross is not just about taking up sadness, but it's actually about living more fully. And that always has an element of joy because you're embracing love with truth and truth with love. And this um, death and threat of death and threat of jail and threat of torture and threat of all that does not have the last word. Mm -hmm. And that's why we celebrate Easter. So Ellen was, in my sense, perhaps resurrection in that moment by starting this this song, Rejoice in the Lord Always. Again, I say rejoice. And you and I both witnessed that the marshals and the guards who had been a little bit harsh for, well, the last year and a half, mm -hmm. you know, like really, really repressive, they just let go. Yeah. That song just kind of you know, was like a wave that went through yes. that courthouse and... Uh, kind of open up everybody's hearts and um, brought us into the next stage without seeing that moment as a failure or yes. anything less than beautiful, despite what the authorities or the powers that be uh, might do to suppress the truth and yes. to shackle love and yes. all of that stuff. That's their yes. only thing is threatening you with jail and possible death or whatever. But mm -hmm. um but the spirit of love is greater. The spirit of love is greater. I wanna give a special thanks to my friend, Claire Grady, who let me interview her on Good Friday, and to all the Kings Bay Plowshare 7. And if you wanna read more about the Kings Bay Plowshares and how you can support them, I have their website linked below at kingsbayplowshare7.org. Also, be sure to check out the Pache Bene website and if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.